And the rejection, there are, there are, of course, people who believe in God that accept evolution, right? But a mm. lot of them don't. And the ones that, the ones that, uh, that may think that evolution is okay, even though they believe in God, may reject medicine. You know, we've got, we've got, um, uh, what is that? Christians that are against taking medicine and wind up killing their kids. Christian so, scientists. Christian scientists. The right? They're, they're, these are all, you know, those other beliefs that are related to the belief in God are part of an entire belief system that, that naturally forms around any view that you have. And if the core of it is not true, all of this stuff is unnecessary. But there are problems that are caused right here and now. It's not simply a question of, well, you know, maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong, and they'll find out when they die. I mean, do, do you have, I mean, I'm assuming that you perhaps have some belief in a God. Yeah, that's, I do. Okay. Now, do you, does your particular belief, um, because you seem to be asking, is it possible to have a benign belief in a God? Yeah, that, that's, that's right. Sure. And it, as far as I can tell, um, it, it's largely irrelevant. Um, and most, there are a lot of people who believe in a God um, who completely separate that or segregate it so that they, it doesn't affect any decisions that they're going to make. And when, if, if you can actually do that to that extent, then my, my response is, okay, what's the point? I mean, wh what is it? I mean, if you just believe something because it makes you feel good. Well, the point is because it makes you feel good. I mean, what, what's the bigger point than that? Right. If, if somebody never took actions that were based on that belief, um, my only objection would be that they believe something that's not demonstrably true. And, and I, you know, I don't necessarily... Why object to that even? Well, well because, because you, that is objected to on principle. It could be. You could find somebody who believes in a God, but acts as, as if that God does not exist. It doesn't change their behavior, doesn't you know, react to situations they encounter in life any differently than some who do, someone who does not believe in that God. That's possible. And maybe you're one of those people. But a lot of people aren't, and that doesn't change the fact that fundamentally it's better to believe true things than false things. Or better, to, let me rephrase that and say, it's better to believe things that you have a good reason to believe instead of just believing things that make you feel good. There's all kinds of things you could believe, believe just because they make you feel good. And a lot of those things, if you really believe them, are going to change the way that you behave. And if the things you're believing that because they feel good uh, are not true, then the changes that they make in your behavior are going to be counterproductive. Now that principle is valid even if y you can find isolated cases of people whose belief in the God is so minimal that it doesn't affect their, their behavior at all. Okay. Do you, now, can I, can I ask a quick question? Do you think it would sure. be, would you prefer um, to, to have your beliefs be consistent with reality? Um, because what you seem to be describing is, um, what's wrong with me having a comfortable delusion? And, yeah, and my exactly. and my my response is if if you enjoy having a comfortable delusion that's your prerogative um, but I am not comfortable with that and I think that we can demonstrate that having a worldview that is consistent with reality and as as delusion free as possible is the best way uh, to to uh, go about making decisions because even though you may think that your God belief doesn't really have any effect on anything else, um, it seems to me that in order to justify that, you're, you, you have to commit some logical fallacy. You have to train your brain or your brain has to have been trained to accept non-truths that are comforting. And while it may not necessarily fall into a slippery slope, um, any brain that is trained to accept delusions because they're comfortable in preference to truth is one that is likely to repeat this same error in other errors in, in, in other areas um, where the consequences are much more dire. Would, would you agree mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, I think that, that's definitely a possibility, but I think in many cases people don't, people often separate like reality from their beliefs. So. I mean, I know many people who, who have a belief in 
guy. In fact, you know, most of the country does. And aside from a few people, I don't know, you know, terrorism or whatever, most people seem to have pretty normal lives, despite the fact that they believe in God. That's like 80%, I'd say, but not yeah. everyone. Yeah, I, I think part, partly is you may, you may be you may have some confusion about what it is that we would ob object to. I mean, I, obviously, uh, I'd prefer that I lived in a, in a world full of people uh, who were free from delusion, who cared about truth, who were working together, you know, um, towards the betterment of society. But the, the average person who just believes in a God and doesn't really let it affect anything in their daily lives, um, I don't consider them to be uh, of any great harm, with the exception of the fact that they provide cover for those who do. Uh, this, okay. is, this is something That's that Sam point. Harris has come up, has, has mentioned on, on numerous occasions, and that is that liberal and moderate believers provide safe sanctuary for the fundamentalists and extremists. The extremely vocal and well-funded uh, minority of this majority that would seek to uh, limit the rights and freedoms of others and by using the same labels, the same holy books, um, they kind of give give validation to ideas that are demonstrably, obviously harmful. Uh, uh, you know, in order to protect their own comfortable delusion, and I'd say that 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 means that there is a problem. Uh, maybe not for the individual. You have to look at this beyond the individual. I'm, I may be comfortable my entire life believing something that's not true, but that belief my, I, I don't live in a vacuum. I share a planet with other people. So my beliefs inform my actions, my actions have consequences, and this, this probably is out to everybody. Anything else, Ryan? Uh, that's it. All right. Well, thanks a lot for calling. Yep, thanks for taking my call. Sure, appreciate it. Yeah, this, this reminds me of a billboard I saw driving in down to the studio today. Um, uh, some local church is advertising on a billboard that they... Uh, that their church is exciting and new and different because they uh, talk about ecology. It's like, wow, we're we're uh, part. Uh, they're, they're like mixing ecology and theology is the the way that they're that they're marketing it. And while I certainly appreciate uh, any um, Christianity-based religion that gets away from the notion that oh, God gave us control of the planet, and uh, A, we're free to do whatever we want to with it there, and not worry about consequences, and B, God will step in and fix everything anyway. I, uh, therefore, we're against all uh, ecological concerns. I, I, like, I I'm certainly appreciate the, uh, a, a church that sets that aside and doesn't go that way, but to me, misses the point entirely. The reason we should care about our, about our planet's ecosystem is because we live here. And it has nothing to do with any invisible men in the sky and what they did or did not give us and what their opinions are about things. There are perfectly um, secular reasons why we should be concerned. And as far as I can tell, it has nothing to do with church or theology. Yeah. So um, that's just... That's just making the same kind of argument that, that Ryan was making, that, oh, well, our incarnation of believing in things we can't prove doesn't make us be flagrant, flagrant, uh, flagrantly uh, uh, obviously wrong on this particular issue. Well, c good for you. But ultimately, what matters is, the, is reality and not your, your um, superstitions. Yeah, it's like, and, and we're talking about obviously religions that are breaking away from orthodox views yeah. and if your orthodox view includes these 100 precepts and these 50 are demonstrably harmful and wrong and you say well we're going to get rid of those we're only going to keep this 50 okay well now you're closer to reality and yeah. then the next church comes along and says well we're going to get rid of these things here and we're going to focus on this and we're going to pull in um, these secular ideas, these responsible ideas about ecology and things like that. And so now we've only got, you know, 10 percent of the of the crazy that we used to have. Um, congratulations. And when you get all the way to joining the rest of us in reality, uh, then maybe then you'll understand. Welcome aboard. Yeah. yeah. Why, why we complain. Exactly. Exactly. We have, uh, I think, John from London, who was on the last show but ran out of time. John, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thanks for calling. Hi, John. 
Yeah, you told me last week to. Um, oh, it's echoing. Um, you told me last week to prove God's existence in less than one minute, right? Oh, I told you you only had a minute left on the show, but yeah. Yeah, um, that's a, such a big um, subject. So, um, where do you start? Well, you should start at the burden of proof, right? Uh huh. Yeah. 